and that formula is pretty complicated so I don't think I'm going to write it on the board because it's almost easier to remember it without saying the huge long complicated formula. So the, the first thing we need to do, um, there's two components. One is a, we'll call it D because that's um, the way I've seen it most commonly described in the formula. Um, it involves all three second order partial derivatives. Uh, the second order partial derivative with respect to x, the one with respect to y, and then the mixed second order partial derivative. So what we need to do is take the second order partial derivatives um, of x and y and the mix. So second order partial derivative uh, and these are of f, by the way, not of g, so of the function f of x. This will look like um, second order partial derivative uh, with respect to x, um, second order partial derivative of f with respect to y, and then the second order partial derivative of f, um, and this is the uh, mixed derivative. So um, with respect to x, we'll use this first order partial derivative with respect to x and take it with respect to x again. So let's go ahead and just expand this um, to be 2x minus 2. I'm going to go ahead and expand uh, this one while I'm at it as well. 2y minus 4. Um, okay, so those are our first order partial derivatives. So with respect to x, we're taking the derivative of this right here with respect to x again, which will just be 2. Um, here we're taking the second order partial derivative of y um, with respect to y of this uh, again. So the derivative of this with respect to y will also just be 2. Um, and then the mixed partial derivative, second order partial derivative, um, we can either use the x first order partial derivative and take that with respect to y, or we can use the first order partial derivative of y but then take it with respect to x. It doesn't matter if you do x first and then y, or y first and then x, but you have to um, use the opposite one on the second step. So let's just go ahead and use this one. Um, since we did the partial derivative with respect to x on this first, now we have to take the partial derivative of this, but with respect to y. Um, and in this case, that's just zero because we're holding x constant um, and so all of this cancels out and becomes zero, so the mixed partial derivative is just um, zero. So now that we have those three um, second order partial derivatives, we have to um, use the, the d test. And basically that is um, the, uh, let's say d equals the partial derivative, second order partial derivative with respect to x times the second order partial derivative with respect to y minus the mixed second order partial derivative squared, uh, which look is looking just like this is zero, so it's just gonna be four. So D is four. Um, and all that matters is whether or not D is greater than or less than zero. So in this case, obviously, four is greater than zero, which means that D is greater than zero. So, um, since d is greater than zero, um, the only other thing we need to do is determine whether or not the second order partial derivative with respect to x at the point 4, 7 is greater than or less than zero. Normally what we would do is if there were variables in here, x's and y still left over in this, we could plug in 4 for x and 7 for y and determine. In this case, there's, no, um, there's nowhere to plug in variables. So we just leave it as is. It's 2. Um, so we have the uh, second order partial derivative with respect to x um, is 2, which is greater than 0. So those are our two tests. We, we, find, um, we find all three second order partial derivatives. We use this d formula, um, the x times the y minus the mixed squared. Um, and determine whether or not that's less than or greater than or less than zero, in this case greater, and then see whether or not the second order partial derivative with respect to x is less than or greater than zero. So in, 
in our uh, problem, they're both greater than zero, which means um, that in this case, our point for seven is a uh, local minimum. So local min at four seven. Um, this test, if d, uh, if the if your d um, equation is greater than zero, but your second order partial derivative with respect to x is less than zero, you're looking at a local maximum. Um, the only other instance being if d is less than zero, in which case you're looking at a saddle point or you can't determine it with these tests. Um, so you can just write saddle point or undetermined. Um, so you always need this d to be greater than zero to proceed with this test and determine whether or not this is greater than or less than zero. In this case, it's greater than. Um, you're looking at a local minimum at the point that we found before. So our final answer is uh, local minimum at the point for seven. Thanks guys, see you next time.